Andrew, TK. Andrew. <laughs> Justin, I can't hear folks. Let me see if I. I can Hello, hear how's it going? Let me try that again without being muted. And it's probably me. Okay. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Oh, oh. Uh, so it might be you, Justin. <laughs> yeah, you, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. OK, great. Santiago, I think you're muted. Hello. Now, um, can you hear me, guys? Yes. So as everyone joins, please sign in. We have a pretty full agenda today. So if we could get a uh, scribe signed up, uh, that'd be fantastic. And uh, we're going to have a uh, deep dive. So the, the, the team, uh, the Intoto team is back this week uh, with uh, a deep dive. And we're going to go through and try to take us through our agenda items and updates fairly quickly so we can have uh, you know, a fairly um, solid amount of time for, for Intoto. And, and, you know, I, I want to make sure that we uh, also, you know, not only get the, the presentation in, but, uh, you know, get a discussion, you know, have, to, have some time for our discussion. Sarah, thank you so much. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks for signing in. So can I get uh, one more person to join Sarah, and then I'll kick us off? Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Appreciate it. OK. So with that, uh, once again, those who just uh, signed on, uh, please add yourself to the list, and I'll uh, use the attendance list to uh, to do check-ins. Um, so quick check-in uh, for me. I'll kick off the process. Uh, it's uh, um, been an interesting week. Uh, I have news on the job front uh, that. Uh, I will publish it next week, uh, but uh, the search is done. Now it's just paperwork. Uh, and uh, beyond that, I'm uh, coming live from uh, No Just Interactive, and uh, we're we're doing a big collaboration event. So I've, I've stolen a, a conference room and uh, uh, you know hosting from here. Uh, let's see who's up next. Uh, Jerry, want to check in? Sure. Hello, everybody. Um, I don't have too much to say except that I did touch base with Michael Ducey this week and uh, he and I are both kind of thinking about taking a step back to reflect on all the comments that we've received about the suggested security subcategories and uh, giving it another look. So hopefully Good. we'll be able to do that in the next week before the next meeting. Fantastic. And we'll have... Uh an agenda item just to, to, to touch on that and that'd be a great time to sort of poke folks to, to go over you. Sounds good. Sarah? I have also, I've been out of touch for a week and a half. I, um, since Dan is giving personal news, I will also. 
Um, I, uh, I lead this nonprofit called Bridge Foundry, which does like outreach and diversity in tech. And we had a big event last night and now that's done. Yay. Mm. So um, I'm back safe and catching up on things. And I did review the governance PR and I love it. Um, I, I have a few minor tweaks and, um, and some stuff I want to get back and propose some specific words to, but it is just really great to see that coming together. Um, I think the the one thing that I don't know whether people want to add is an, I don't, are we going to talk about governance this time? Not this time. Okay. Let me just put it in the PR because I know we're, we've got a full agenda. Awesome. I, I, I really like the direction. Great. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Rachel and JJ for, for the efforts there. Uh, Justin. All right. Um, I've been continuing to work with uh, Spiffy and Spire folks uh, on security audit. We had blog posts come out and uh, discuss a little bit about um, what, what we came up with and we're looking at putting this together for an academic conference. So that's my main update. Excellent. Brilliant. Andrew? Uh, Andrew Weiss, sorry. Yep, I, I'll, uh, so just still waiting for some additional feedback on the compliance scoping doc um, that's out there. Uh, in ether that Liz and I have been putting together uh, some additional suggestions in there uh, that I added today, namely around um, IETF and other standards bodies uh, and how they can potentially relate to some of the CNCF project landscape. Uh, so thinking spiffy, tough, and and how potentially those can be proposed to those bodies if if warranted. Uh, and then also, Dan, I sent you the intros to Dr. Iorga and David Waltemeyer over at NIST. So feel free to, to run with that thread as you see fit. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've uh, uh, seen, you know, I, I reached out to them for um, availability and uh, we'll try to schedule in uh, based on their schedules. Awesome. Thank you. And, and I, I'm sorry to jump in, but let me just say Please. that we're definitely quite interested in IETF standardization. We have occasionally had folks, especially from government, say, hey, wouldn't it be nice if Tuff was IETF standardized? So um, we, in fact, just had a conversation about it earlier this week. So would love Great. to talk. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, I, um, I threw it in there as a proposal. It's not something I personally will own since I'm not as familiar with the whole IETF publication process. It is a little bit involved, uh, but that is something that we should all collectively look at figuring out. Great. Um, let, can can uh, someone who's taking notes uh, uh, add an action item for me to, to follow up with Justin and make sure that I'm connecting our agenda uh, with the... Um, the NIST folks. Thank you. Um, Andrew Martin, welcome. Hello, thank you. This is, um, this is my first time on a call. Uh, I've been, been lurking on the repo for uh, a few weeks now. Uh, so to introduce myself, I'm Andrew Martin. Um, uh, I have a consultancy called Control Plane um, in London, and we are focused on ultimately uh, container and Kubernetes security engineering. Um, but it's basically, uh, that narrow scope is obviously much wider when you consider uh, how does a container get to be, what does it come through pipeline, et cetera. So we're just basically doing kind of DevSecOps uh, with containerized focus. And um, we've been working with Santiago for the past uh, few months, probably three or four now, um, deploying in Toto with, uh, with uh, a web-facing customer in the UK um, and, uh, and just helping to sort of bring some commercial requirements back down. Um, having a lovely time, everything's going very nicely. Um, so, hello, uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here and hope to contribute. Awesome, welcome Andrew. Erica? I actually just flew back from London yesterday uh, for the week. Just uh, did a little intro to Kubernetes for CNCF thing. Uh, so I, Mostly don't have, we canceled the working group for Kubernetes this week. Uh, that, I think that's amazing. The thing though that I've been thinking and wondering about in particular for the Kubernetes case is how to uh, well, deal with concurrency and, or concurrent events in distributed systems and whether we, it makes sense to have the, like full gates at certain points or what does that mean? when there are you know, multiple timelines of the truth going on. Mm. And especially also what that means for like attributing actions to any one individual. 
should we look at ways of extending that, thinking about it more comprehensively? That's all I've got. Erica, while, while you're here, could I uh, ask if you could uh, yeah. sort of check off an agenda item and, um, you know, share with folks the, uh, thank you for posting about the um, KubeSec. Uh, can you just sort of share a second on, on that and what folks should be uh, preparing in terms of the, the CFP? Sure. Uh, I think KubeSec, KubeCon is the big event in the Kubernetes world. And because everyone in Kubernetes only thinks about the Kubernetes world, and that's like the entire thing. Um, it's a big deal. <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, co-located events, one of which is the Red Hat, I think uh, AWS and AquaSec are sponsoring, specifically devoted for enterprise security. So that I think it's a, the clients are, or the people who would be in, attending and interested are those who are trying to deal with security in the enterprise and the like the real situations of the compliance and larger demands at. So those are the things that I think we're going to be discussing there. And user focused? So, uh, or <laughs> so, uh, uh, custom or like uh, enterprise customer and supplier focused. Does that okay. make sense? Got it. I don't know very many developers who think I'm developing this specifically for a large financial organization. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, there's, there's a lot of apps in that space. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, enterprise customers are still customers. Or some kind of user of security, right? Well, everyone's a user of security, whether it's good security, it's a different story. Good point. Is there an interest in like having a, uh, a working group level discussion, would that be appropriate uh, you know, for us at to sort of share it at um, CubeSec? Or around then? Right. Uh, I'm down to meet up with anyone and everyone. <laughs> right, so we're, we're gonna have, you know, in, uh, um, you know, at, at KubeCon, at uh, CloudNativeCon, uh, we'll have the sort of, normal, normally sanctioned uh, working group events uh, through that. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if, if we should prioritize uh, anything for the, the CubeSec thing or if, if that's, uh, you know, if we're not appropriate there. I would need to get in touch with the organizers. Cool. Uh, as in okay. more of an engineer side, you okay. know, I'm more helping and participating rather than organizing. Right on. Um, I mean, I'm sure it fits within the scope and like subject for sure. sure. I just don't know much okay. beyond that. Um, you know, at, at present, the, the plan is sort of you know, we'll continue and we'll organize something at uh, KubeCon in general, and uh, then you know, KubeSec. Uh, you know, please, if you're you know, in that space uh, and interested, uh, submit a CFP. Closes on Monday. Thank you, uh, Christian. I actually don't have anything to report. My last note was from this meeting last week. Everything else was internal. <laughs> <laughs> cool, good to see you. Mark, welcome back. Hey guys, uh, nothing too much new. We're about to launch our internal uh, container POC next week. So I was catching up with the issues from the meeting week after less, so I'll have those reposted up here before this meeting ends. That's, that's about it from here. Excellent. TK? Um, nothing new from my side as well. I'm still waiting for the 5G security working group to uh, uh, basically organize when the next meeting is going to be and also uh, 2019 We haven't done anything beyond what we lost up for. Excellent. Thank you. Santiago. Uh, hello. Yeah, after most of this week, I just prepared this presentation pretty much. <laughs> uh, and uh, I reviewed a little bit about the government's documents, uh, mostly to get inspiration because we're also starting to like get a more formal process to like start building in total standards and uh, Contribution guidelines and codes of conduct and all this. Excellent. Rachel? Um, I address concerns that were left 
in the governance stock PR as of like 9 a.m. this morning. I saw just before this call there were new comments and those are not addressed. So if you have any more comments, there's a little bit more time open. Excellent. Thanks, Rachel. Is there anyone who I haven't called on uh, who wasn't checked in? We've got everybody. All right. So just going through the, the last little bit of agenda items, I want to get into um, the Intoto in deep dive. Um, so uh, the, the compliance uh, document. Uh, Andrew, where, where's, where's the new um, new material? Where should we be looking there? I just posted it here in the chat there. Okay. <laughs> so it's pretty high level. It's pretty short, concise. Uh, Liz put the initial draft together. I've added a few additional suggestions in there, but we go. Uh, and there's some a couple of comments on the side. So, have we? Ha I haven't had a chance to schedule you for this. I I was uh, away during a week. Did you go through this uh, entire proposal? Um, you know, with the working group here. Uh, not formally, not yet. Uh, we've had some conversations just on the GitHub issue, but I have to go through it now or at a, another. Would another you time. be available next week uh, to do that? Uh, let me check. Yeah, I can do next week. Awesome. Let's let's schedule that for next week and, and uh, uh, go through this in depth and uh, you know get some get some uh, more formal feedback. Sure. Yeah, and if anyone else has any suggestions, please don't hesitate to to add them on. Excellent. Thanks, Andrew. All right, and uh, now I think, uh, um, Jerry, was there anything else in the safe landscape that folks should look at? Uh, I, I've kept it in just to keep the um, you know, our attention uh, focused on it. Anything new that we're um, that you're looking for specific feedback on? So I don't think that there's anything new that I'm looking for feedback on, but one of the things that I'm going to be thinking about and reflecting on in the next week is whether the subcategories are well named and I suspect that it would be helpful to get the perspectives of people who come from different backgrounds on that. Um, so that's one thing that I would really like everybody to just kind of take a look through and see if the name of each subcategory resonates with you or if there's something that you think we could modify to make it uh, more generally applicable or just clearer. At this point, you, have you, um, we've gotten rid of kind of uh, all of the examples and, and uh, are, is everything now uh, sort of the descriptor and the definition? Is that? That, I mean, that could potentially use improvements too. That's all part of what I'll be looking at in the next week. So I, I would say that if you feel like you could offer an interesting perspective on that, or even if, you know, you're not sure if, you, if your perspective would be interesting, I, I would still like to hear from you. Ask questions. And, right. Yeah, hopefully we can get all of our feedback together and pull it into a, a, a more final draft. Excellent. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, let's, uh, you know, today we have uh, Santiago and uh, Justin, and they're going to uh, you know, thank you for the, the introduction last week. And we're going to go into uh, a deeper dive on that and uh, uh, then have some uh, time for discussion uh, at the end. So, um, Santiago, are you presenting? Uh, yes. Awesome. So, do you know where the sh the sharing? Yeah, do you have slides? Or you, do you know uh, let's see if this works on my machine. Uh, sometimes my time window manager goes crazy with these things. <laughs> slides? No. Looks good. Yep. Good. Okay. Great. Take it away. So, uh, just to, to give some context, I tried to, my understanding from what you mentioned last week is uh, that the uh, CNCF application process was changing into a presentation and that this presentation was kind of like a first draft to see exactly how they may look like. So I tried to pretty much take a look at existing TOC guidelines for applications, uh, tried to massage it into something that was a presentable form 
Uh, I also took some content that I had. There's going to be a little demo about uh, Python reference implementation, but uh, let's see, let's see how this whole thing uh, works out. So, yeah, I think everyone here already knows that I'm all about in Toto, and, <laughs> and uh, like I would say, I'm a, a long adjust in the lead designer of this uh, solution, and I'm going to talk about how it uh, matches the cloud native landscape and how it, uh, it's very necessary for securing uh, like next generation cloud native uh, solutions. Now, as part of the application, we need a description, so I just put a slide in there. Uh, Intoto is a framework to secure supply chains in and out of the cloud. Uh, most of current cloud native de deployments use a very like very diverse, very like configurable uh, graphs of nodes that interact with each other, and they most of them perform operations on artifacts to either do quality quality assurance, like a vulnerability scanner, or a transformation, say a Docker build or a or a regular build or a linting or anything like this. Now, something that I want to I wanted to like uh, to do is to give a little bit more of background to as to what this means in terms of the description, and I'm going to use a very like idealized uh, supply chain, and uh, I'm going to walk through exactly how things can break in this context. Now, all of you may like laugh about how simple this is, but it's uh, pretty much like a very bare bones application that you may check in into GitHub. You may be using uh, a build system. I think this logo is messing. I forgot what it was. Uh, you may be checking it in a CI system to run the tests, uh, Travis or whatever you want to use. And you may do some packaging. Uh, in this case, we're building a .dev file. Uh, as all of us like, uh, in the safe group knows, uh, all of these single points of failure uh, can be attacked. In this case, uh, for example, you can break into the co version control system and you can introduce vectors, as it has happened many times before. Uh, or you could, for example, uh, try to break into the build system and uh, use a backdoor in compiler and, uh, or create a backdoor version of Xcode to introduce backdoors in mobile applications and so on and so forth. Or you can the compromise the packaging infrastructure and introduce a, a backward version of the whole uh, final product and so on and so forth. Or as it has happened before, you can sometimes even by mistake forget about CI and just release the untested versions of Windows uh, and update everyone's machines and kind of break it for a couple of hours. Um, and that's not the only thing. Uh, you can also, even though there's clean solutions that work on this, uh, I made some patches to get to like uh, increase the security of how uh, metadata is stored. You can use our solution today. And most of you guys are still, uh, familiar with uh, Tough, which is a solution that takes care of uh, what would be this, which is the last mile of uh, software delivery. Uh, it has pretty much resulted in many, in securing many things that you guys are like familiar with. Uh, you may recognize the logo in there uh, and uh, and yeah like all of this is good news if you secure individual aspects but the complete problem is not fixed uh, there are gaps between steps which is uh, how uh, these nodes interact together and there's also a matter of compliance you can sometimes even though the step exists you really are not listening to what the, for example a security scanner is telling you so what Intoto is all about is to secure the complete supply chain. Intoto is, uh, means as a whole in Latin, and uh, it's, it is not a coincidence. We really want to do a holistic, complete, thorough verification of the supply chain as a whole. In uh, key points, this means that we want to verifiably define the steps of the software supply chain. We want to verifiably define who's able to inter to perform operations in the supply chain and which operations, and then guarantee that everything happens to how this uh, definition is done and in no other way. So to do this, we pretty much use two things, the layout and uh, attestations in forms of link metadata. Now, the layout, here's like a toy version of it. It's pretty much uh, what steps exist in the toy example that I showed before. Well. We had a version control system, a CI system, we had a build server, and we have a packager. Uh, it also tells you who's able to do what, 
for example, Volvid is only able to interact with a version control system. And Dave, who is the owner of uh, Travis, is the one that's performing the build. And Carl and Aaron will be the ones that build and package the final application. We also have a, in the layout, we have a rules, uh, a series of rules to define how these artifacts interrelate to each other to make sure that uh, all of the artifact flow is done properly. In this case, we know that the sources that were created by Bob and no one else are the ones that we need to, needed to check down in the CI system and the ones that are needed to be sent over to the, to the build server. And what uh, Carl built is what it's the only thing only what Carl built is going to go into the packaging infrastructure. And it also has a signature to authenticate who created this layout. Uh, in this case, we know that Alice is the owner or this or the CISO of the company, and she's the one that says exactly how the software is built, and that's why we have her signature in this layout file. The Counterpart of the layout file, the other, the other piece of uh, metadata is what we call links. And links are essentially attestations that each of the actors that were uh, uh, selected in the layout uh, create every time they perform an operation. For example, if Bob uh, created, a, created a source code or checked out the source code, he will uh, report in a link what was in the version control system, in this case, uh, you will see in the bottom left that it says foo and a secure hash of foo. So that's what we're going to use uh, to link things together. And uh, finally, once we have all of the links and layout and the final product, we bundle it all together and send it to the end user. This can be a, a package manager. This can be a, an admission controller in the case of the cloud or it can be just a general audit scanner that you can put uh, inside of your container extractor to like continuously verify that all of your images were produced properly. Now, this is the big picture. Uh, I don't know how much of a deep dive you guys uh, want. I, I don't know, Dan, do you, do you want me to go deep into the specifics of the layout or is that a yes? Okay. Yes, sorry, yeah, <laughs> I had myself muted. Yeah, please do. Yeah, but I saw the yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so inside of the layout, uh, I already said that what are the key one, components. One, sorry, one thing I do want to mention too is, is that we will be doing a demo where you'll also have the opportunity to see a lot of this. So even if we go through this a little quickly now, um, there'll be a good point later to stop us or stop us now, whatever you prefer. Thanks for the context. Okay. So, uh, so basically, in the layout, as I said, it's a, essentially a policy that you define for your supply chain and how to, everything connects together. Uh, in this case, uh, the key points to consider are steps. What are, the, what, are, what are the steps that we perform? Functionaries, which are the people that operate on the supply chain, and uh, a series of rules to link the steps together. There's also other useful information, like an expiration date. You may want to your layout to expire so you can update the policy forcefully every couple of months, for example. And of course, it has a signature over the whole thing, so you know the layout is to be trusted that the right person uh, created layout. Inside of the layout, you find something that are called steps or step definitions. Uh, they essentially describe who's able to perform the step, and it contains a series of rules that will uh, limit and interconnect steps together. Uh, for example, this is, an exa this is a very simple rule. It says create foo.py. That means that the person who is uh, performing that step is allowed to create the file called foo. Uh, in this case, uh, the artifact foo is a file. Uh, we are, the idea is that it's, this is really agnostic to the type of artifacts. For example, in the cloud, you may have Docker images. So you may want to to specify that a Docker build step is actually building a Docker image with this stack. Um, in this case, of course, for a version control system, there's no foo, and then there's a foo, and you want to like ensure that this happens. Uh, another example of an artifact rule is, for example, match, which is what you use to uh, link steps together. Match, uh, in this case, match is matching foo.py that was created on the tag release step. 
So if, for example, this was done in the build uh, in the build step, you want to only use the artifacts that were created in the tag release step. In this case, it was the foo.py file. You want to make it so that the version control system is correctly linked by the artifacts with the packaging step or the build step. Uh, another like interesting element inside of the layout is uh, what we call inspections. Uh, so far, we only know who did what and how the artifacts interconnect, interconnect together. But for example, you may want to know if your CI system doesn't have any instance of the word warning inside of it, or if you are running a vulnerability scanner and you want to like, uh, verifiably ensure that there's no CVEs with a, a CVE, and I forgot the acronym, a score higher than seven, then you, may, you could put an inspection within it, which will essentially unpack the link metadata and verify that the specifics of that link uh, follow further rules. Um, an example that we're doing with Git is uh, today you can do signed push and you can link them together. Uh, you can pass this signed push uh, certificates forward and you can use them to, for example, enforce that only certain uh, people merged into master or that uh, no people that are not allowed into the project created any commits or that no commits are inside. That's the kind of information that you would uh, verify using an inspection. Now we're going to the fun part, uh, the demo. Let me try to do another like, shuffle. Did this work? Awesome. Is this font size good? Ooh, a little, a little small. Better? Better. Awesome. OK, so uh, in this demo, we're essentially going to follow what, uh, what I did for the presentation. I'll essentially use the in total Python implementation to create the layout. We'll see the layout together. Uh, and then we're going to simulate all of the functionaries acting through the supply chain until we get to a verification step and we can verify it and we can see that everything's verified properly. So trying to zoom in just for so remember Alice is the one that creates a layout. She's the she's the project owner. I made a helper script just to Uh, that I forget to do this. Yeah, I totally forgot. Sorry. <laughs> I needed to install in Toto. Okay. So now, now I created a layout file. Uh, just to give a little bit of a, of a like, quick dive on what's on it. You, you can see that there's a bunch of rules in it that are connecting uh, all the steps together. There's a bunch of uh, public keys of the functionaries that are saved into the layout. And uh, if you see, there's uh, a key ID field uh, here. That's, uh, that key ID is the one that we put on the steps. For example, this is a step. And that's how we tell that, for example, this packaging step, uh, let me highlight the whole thing. This packaging step here uh, is signed by the key that we got there. Okay. Uh, finally, we have a signature all the way in the bottom. Uh, this is the signature of Alice that uh, essentially authenticates this layout. Now, well, Alice created the layout. We have a couple of functionaries that uh, need to perform steps. Uh, let me remove the links that I left from a demo yesterday. So what I'm going to run now is a step in the supply chain. Uh, this is basically you're using, we're using the Intoto toolchain to do what you would usually do, which, which is check out the repository. Uh, check out the repository. 
and then uh, create the signed up station of uh, that specific checkout. So in this case, uh, we created this piece of link metadata when we run git checkout that created an attestation of uh, the operation that we perform. This attestations, this pieces of link metadata uh, are the, what we're going to use later to essentially build this graph and verify that uh, everything is proper. Uh, inside of the link, you can see there's a uh, There's, for example, the file that was tracked, uh, foo.ui, and then uh, a secure hash of it, and then there's a signature of Bob saying, hey, I actually performed this step. This is the product of uh, performing this step. Mm -hmm. uh, now, <laughs> Say that we had another step, for example, before release, increase, uh, increasing the version number of the project. So if you guys see now, we have uh, foo.py. We have foo version zero, but we want to increase it. Um, just to showcase another, another tool, say that uh, we, instead of uh, having Vim, or actually, now that we have Vim, then well, it is a little hard to wrap Vim using encoder run. So what we can do instead is use uh, encoder record, which is essentially taking a snapshot of the state of the, of the file system and of the host before, uh, before running, uh, which we do here. And then we can, we can conveniently edit the, the version number and then we can stop recording and save a piece of link metadata that will essentially be a statement of what we did. Uh, now, as you guys see, this, uh, this new piece of link metadata that we created by recording both states, it originally had the secure hash of foo.py that was checked out in the version control system. And then as a product, it recorded the new uh, secure hash of the of foo.py. This is how we're going to start tracking artifacts how, as they move in the supply chain. Now, we're going to move to the last, uh, to the last step in the supply chain, which is uh, Carl is going to package what, uh, what Bob did. So for this, I'm going to copy The demo project from Carl, and uh, we're going to use in total run again. We're going to wrap tar. Uh, tar you see. Again, uh, we use we're using the like inner wrapper. We pass a. Um, uh, that name, a couple of hints to the tool to so it knows how to sign it and which uh, artifacts to like uh, pay attention to. Uh, if you don't pass this, it will just track everything, which is a little slower. And then uh, the command that we're running. Uh, in this case, the package link, uh, it's, it tracked the foo.py as it came in, which uh, as we can see, this is how we are linking the update version step with a package and finally we have a the demo project rgc that's uh, the product of uh, packaging and finally we, will, we want to verify all of this so clean this out mm. uh, for this we pretty much just need a alice's public key uh, the layout, uh, the links, and the final product itself that we want to verify. In this case, it's the end project, as it is it's packaged. So again, we, we need a public key, a couple of links, uh, the artifact that we want to verify, the final product, and the layout that's going to tell us everything uh, that's about the supply chain. 
Uh, we run our verification command, we pass what's the root layout, uh, and then we pass uh, the key that's signing this layout. And if I didn't screw up, I screwed up. Uh, <laughs> uh, it actually caught that I probably did something wrong. Uh, in this case, it says uh, the match between the clone and uh, yeah, between the clone and the update version number doesn't match. Oh no, actually, it's because yeah. If we look at the clone link, that's this. Yeah, okay, so I, I see what's wrong. I didn't remove the demo project when I run the clone step. Yeah, now it actually run the clone step. But I performed the step since the repository existed because I didn't clean up properly. Uh, the step was failing. We can actually see uh, that the return value is now zero. If you check out the final product, the old version of the link metadata, the return value was 128, which meant that the step had failed. So now we run the verification and now everything works. Uh, unintendedly, I, uh, <laughs> I showed what this is all about. I committed a mistake when doing the clone and uh, it was caught by Intoto, which is great news. <laughs> now, I'm going to go back to the presentation just to finalize with a little bit more of the formalities of the whole. Uh, Maybe we can take a couple of uh, questions here. We've had a few. Oh yeah, that's, that's a little sweet. Yeah. Uh, so Erica just asked if Intoto handles key or link revocation. Uh, so no, we use the implicit revocation using expiration dates, but we don't have a, an explicit mechanism. Something that I'll talk a little bit in the roadmap is that uh, Notary and Tuff, for example, are great additions for uh, handling namespacing of the metadata for projects and for explicitly revocating uh, certain like namespaces within the supply chain uh, without rotating the whole, the whole layout, for example. Right. This so, is something uh, Uptain handles, right? Uh, Uptain yeah. has a lot of interesting features that would be cool to not be so vehicle specific. Yeah. Yeah, there's it, within this currently, uh, Intoto doesn't have a separate time server component. But if you if you shipped and verified Intoto metadata from a tough repository or an Uptain repository, then you automatically get that. So it's not sort of like uh, foisted into the system as a separable thing. It's Intoto in general assumes that you you have this. It does. There are ways like you can do key and link revocation and stuff like that in Intoto but no, there isn't a separate explicit time server like there is with Uptain. Yeah, um, something to add to that is that the Tuff and Intuit are very like uh, metadata friendly between each other. Uh, one of the one of the implement, uh, integrations that we have right now, they're actually using Tuff and Intuit together and we're thinking of standardizing that mechanism. Uh, that's a way to just like get the complete supply chain security out of the box. Excellent. So Mark, you had a question about uh, metadata, and Andrew has one about validating, validating uh, referential integrity. Hmm. How do I get to the chat? Yeah, I'll let you go first, because mine is kind of a meta question. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Andrew. 
Yeah, so uh, this is good stuff. Thanks for uh, taking the time to share this. Uh, is there a way to use Intoto to validate referential integrity between artifacts? So you mentioned that artifacts can really be anything from binaries to source code, packages, and, and whatnot. Uh, but let's say I have some sort of uh, artifact that's uh, maybe an attestation artifact in the context of risk management. How can I validate that that artifact is, you know, from who it says it's from and that it's being updated accordingly um, and, and connected to maybe other artifacts? Uh, so let me see if I understood uh, your question properly. Something that we do have is uh, the concept of sub layout. So you can essentially part of your supply chain steps be part of a third party supply chain. Say that uh, you're using a, a couple of uh, Debian packages in your Docker build. You can verify that those Debian packages themselves were made on a proper supply chain layout that follow best practices and uh, everything within it uh, is verifiably using Toto too. Is this what you were asking or? Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. Okay, yeah, cool. I think there's an another component too that kind of comes up here, which is that you can also interrelate interrelate <clears throat> aspects of how your other things got built and okay. how they work together. So for instance, if you're saying, um, you know, the, the library that I'm using here should be built by the same compiler as the main thing, as, as the main project or something like that. Yep. You can also validate and verify that all those sorts of things have happened. So all those, all those sorts of things like this, you can imagine expressing are expressible in, in, in Toto in this way. Okay, very cool. Thank you. Another question real quick related, how to um, sort of verify the information flows are secure. So what is, I mean, especially in situations where the system is running on itself or triggering other actions, is there a way we can kind of incorporate and have a, you know, have a security model, a proven security model? Uh, let me the way, see. Like there is in Linux. I'm sorry? Like, so like SE Linux, you know, it's kind of based on like the Bell Laputa model. There's a few other ones. And there uh, is, once you have these like interconnecting, which is what we're dealing with a lot. Right. So something that uh, we do have in the metadata is, uh, and right now it's kind of like a basic structure, is uh, environment uh, information, environment dictionary that you can expect. Something that uh, we've been like tinkering with and we don't have like anything formal yet is to, for example, have TPM uh, attestations inside of the environment dictionary about the whole whole host file system integrity using like secure boot or something. I don't know if this is answers your question or did I go on another line? It was another one of my questions. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. We can just. And, and, and I, will, I will quickly say that we have a, a very detailed analysis like like on the level of what we did for Tuff about why Intoto is secure, including, you know, link metadata tampering and uh, layout tampering and other things like that. And what scenarios it, it loses security and to what degree. So I think that is probably closer to the answer to your question and we can talk more about that later. But I think Santiago, you want to maybe move on with the rest of the presentation just so we can be sure we get through it. Uh, sure. Okay. So roadmap, uh, things that we're working a lot on now getting out is, uh, we're trying to formalize a, uh, like governance documents, uh, which is like, a how to interact with the whole community, how to get changes in, uh, I've been trying to get the, I mean, thinking of like adding code covenant that's our like default, default code conduct of this. Uh, we're also working on cloud native enhancements. We don't have the specification at URI artifact definition, but uh, it's pretty much just something we need to formalize. Uh, we are working with Graphias. If you guys know these guys, uh, we're trying to get them to use interchangeable metadata and to help them fix their security model. Uh, we uh, also something that we're working on is I we want to integrate uh, in Toto and Top in a more formal way and probably even launch service using Top and Notary to provide the layout registration and name spacing of the layouts. You could essentially like let's encrypt for your uh, artifact layouts. And then um, some, this is something that I haven't shared with the team, but uh, continuous metadata verification. It, you could use it in the cloud as a container. 
not only an admission controller, but a, as a continuous uh, verification, anytime you revoke a piece of linked metadata, you can pull a container out. And you could revoke a piece of linked metadata by, for example, redoing a CV scanning and finding that there's new vulnerability of certain degree and uh, revoke the metadata and as a, con uh, as a consequence, essentially pull any unsafe image from the cloud. I know there's similar solutions to this, but this would be just a, like a very like simple, elegant, and automatic way to do things. Uh, on Beyond Cloud Native, uh, we will probably launch uh, uh, with the reproducible builds people, uh, the reproducer setup, and then in total transport that you can use to fetch your Debian packages for, and make sure that they're reproducibly built by a couple of like uh, nonprofits that are joining in the whole effort. And uh, something that uh, we wanted to do is uh, integrate into build kit to like start uh, identifying artifacts and verifying them as they're pulling in, they're being pulled in into your into our images, which goes similar uh, in the vein of what Andy was asking. We're also thinking of uh, adding security enhancements and formalizing them. Uh, uh, HSM and TPM support, we already support UV keys using TPG signatures, but we probably want to do something a little bit more uh, uh, like on a general grade, not only uh, of, uh, like RFC 4880. Uh, we also want to have uh, host attestations, which is something that uh, I just like mentioned, using like TPMs to authenticate the whole host and provide a uh, read-only boxes for building and performing steps. And SGX uh, Cloud Builders would be something that I would love to work on. We also have a Go implementation on the works uh, to like be more friendly with cloud native environments. And uh, layout scanning, we, uh, a very nice consequence of this is that you can essentially just check a layout and see if someone is doing the uh, uh, best CII practices, for example. Uh, can, or, wait, can you define a layout real quick? What you mean by a layout? Uh, policy. Uh, the big file that I made in the beginning contains the steps and the signatures uh, uh, and the public keys of the people that should perform every step and uh, restriction on each step. Did that, uh, is that good? Yes. Did I lose connection? Yeah, that's great. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Keep going. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and well, uh, we have a couple of integrations going. Uh, there, oh, there's related work. There's uh, Graphia, SSPX, already and Peter. We're all in the same like supply chain environment, uh, authentication, artifact memoization, uh, cloud native uh, artifact recording as Graphia. Uh, then this is the, like the big integrations that we have right now. We have a on the bottom right, there are very homebrew projects that are already releasing into the metadata. Uh, Andrew here may uh, recognize the logo of his company here uh, and use UK. Uh, we also are, we actually hit production today in Datadog uh, in the new agent. And uh, we are also working with reproducible builds. We are taking care of the reproducer setup, which is this thing that I spoke about. And I already, I'm, I'm an Arch developer too. Uh, by the way, I use Arch, and <laughs> and uh, we also uh, we also are working with Graphias to like fix this uh, uh, the security model and to provide us with a transport that can help us uh, provide more cloud native uh, metadata transfer between like all of the like super convoluted uh, distributed systems that are in the cloud. Uh, there's also other people that are interested. Uh, we had some talks with uh, Docker. We have uh, some integration with the OpenSUSE Open Build system. Uh, I also work with the Debian people. Uh, and I don't know which other. Oh, we spoke with uh, GovReady and Repeater. I know the developer of Repeater. Uh, he wants to like essentially merge the metadata. But uh, there's so much going on that's like there's only so much things you can focus on at the same time. Uh, other information that is required as part of the application. Uh, we have a tentative, tentative sponsorship from Alexis Richardson, just like we, we don't know yet. Uh, we would like to jo join an incubation. We have in total as you need to identifier, current project sponsor. I really don't know exactly what was this. I don't know if I have to say NSF, uh, Justin probably knows better. Uh, and the license is Apache. We actually got all the signatures to relicense as Apache as of Monday. We, were, we used to be MIT. We have uh, all of this code repositories to your disposal. 
only the ones that have a star are not Apache. Uh, but they can be changed later, actually, yeah. And then dependency licenses, I think this is just uh, like formalisms that we need to go through. Go through. There's a bunch of dependencies and different components of what we've uh, released. Uh, these are our communication channels. You can always join uh, IRC. I'll be there with a couple of bots and a couple of developers. Uh, you can join our mailing list and you can, I don't know how this works on Slack, but, but we're also there. Uh, we have our, a couple of websites up. You can use our design tool to create your layouts today. We actually updated it to the latest specification a week ago. And uh, we usually release a blog post throughout in total in our in the labs, uh, in the labs website. Um, we have this release uh, cadence. We are very like devoted to semantic versioning. I hate when people don't do it. Uh, we do release candidates, uh, release candidates, candidates monthly, uh, or sometimes even faster, depending if, if it's a patch release uh, needed uh, with a major feature at, at the same time. And uh, we still don't know when to release the major version, so we cannot say we have like a timeline for each major version to be released. Uh, these are the initial committers. Two years ago, I checked the logs. Uh, we have 13 committers in the reference implementation and, and 16 contributors among all of the projects that I, that I put out the admission controller, the cube control the plugin, the Jenkins plugin, etc, etc, etc. And uh, well, these are pretty pictures. <laughs> Any questions? Can you put the slide up with the URLs again? Uh, this? No. This. That's it. Thanks. No problem. Yeah, sorry if I flipped through fast to this. I was looking at the clock. I think we can, have two Can minutes. you put a, a link to the slide deck into the document? Uh, sure. Uh, something that I want to ask uh, Andrew Martin. Uh, uh, I'm sharing this, but I know there's sensitive uh, information about your company, so I don't know. Like, And I mean just those two logos. I don't know how, like... Uh, um, my understanding is that that is fine. So um, I will okay. just check that up for final confirmation. But um, yeah, uh, give me one moment. Okay. You can then, share uh, with this group, which is gated. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll do that. Uh, should I get? Yeah, I'll, I'll send the I'll send it on the emails of everybody. I, I think I have access to that. Or is there a, like a better way? I'm not. I'm not too familiar with Google. So, it's really. Um, Christian, we'll, we'll, we'll put this into the minutes. If you share okay. that link. So just a shareable, shareable link or? Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Yep. Okay. So right before um, you know, folks drop, I want to make sure I, I get the time to sort of see if we can do some triangulation. Um, Andrew? In the um, safe compliance work that we're you know currently scoping, is there anything that we can um, kind of leverage in Toto to inform uh, where we're going with uh, that compliance journey, and uh, you know, provide uh, additional feedback to uh, the TOC, to Lexis, and, and to Ken? What do you think? Andrew, did you have to go? Oh, sorry. I was on mute. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was actually just talking about this with a couple of folks uh, on my side. Uh, I think if we can get um, a couple of NIST folks to talk about the work that's taking place with, with OSCAL, the Open Security Controls Assessment Language, mm. I think something like Intoto can fit in really nicely with that and help to bridge the gap. In fact, I already posted a, a link to it to some of those folks in the upstream repo. So. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot of value here in in merging those two for sure. Great. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, next week we'll we'll have uh, Andrew and we'll kick off some of the discussion around uh, the safe compliance scoping. Uh, you know, once again, we're we're still working on the security landscape for CNCF landscape in association with the CNCF landscape. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, some time uh, over the weekend or uh, next week to 
uh, review both of those documents. Uh, you know, we appreciate the uh, attention there. Um, Santiago and um, and Justin, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this was uh, fantastic, and uh, I can let a little bit of overflow time if folks have a little bit more discussion that we want to, to uh, have around this. Uh, but I want to make sure we wrap up uh, for anyone who has to drop. Any are, are there any further questions that we you know folks would like it, to get into before we uh, wrap up today? Just Mark, I just put this on the agenda for a future conversation because I think it needs more than three minutes. But uh, this issue of metadata management is is a thorny one, and the uh, the FSISAC group, which is a, a finance project supported by DHS, is trying to use a metadata model to uh, you know to follow provenance for data, and you've got the same set of issues there. How do you map from these domain specific models for what's in the metadata to things that are interoperable to other tools like even in the in the NIST stack, how do you you know map to other things like a thread de representations and the difference between a policy and an attribute and even the name of an application that might show up on an alert? So I I think it's an unfair thing to ask this project to address that, but mm -hmm. maybe there's some you know groundbreaking stuff we could do by trying to inject some kind of model based representation at the ground floor of a project like this. Right, so so we've actually thought about this specific issue in a couple different contexts a lot. Um, and our philosophy with this to this point is that these models and these ways of having these general abstractions are not yet defined and rich and, and sort of um, static enough that it, uh, in our opinion, it makes sense at this time to invest an enormous amount of effort in them. So instead, what we're focused on is making sure that the actual um, metadata and the actual um, cryptographically verifiable aspects of this are all um, are all produced in a way that is verifiable and non-modifiable and so on across these different contexts. So, and then you know, if something like that has a richer model, like for instance, Grafias uh, from Google has a richer model for some of these aspects of things in the cloud then that layers perfectly well on top of what we're doing. And now we've provided the metadata they can actually trust. We're hitting this in Kubernetes quite directly where there's no standardized place to store metadata and it's kind of spread out and that makes interoperability very difficult. There are like annotations on the objects themselves, but those have no access control separate from the objects themselves. So that one's a very complicated one is that there needs to be kind of almost field specific access policies per thing, um, which gets that multi-dimensionality is very difficult to handle and would love to know if you have a solution. Well, longer conversation. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is one of those interdisciplinary problems, right? Because the, the modeling folks have solutions for this. Um, you know, you could argue that schema.org out of Google's may be a better representation that you could do reasoning with than the traditional security models that we inherit from Active Directory. But, you know, there's a lot of work to do to make the connections there. We, we did try this in the beginning and spent about, I don't know, six to nine months of painful time with Santiago on dead ends until we realized <laughs> this was. I believe it. I so. believe it. <clears throat> well. Um, so, Mark uh, and uh, Erica, I'll, I'll take an action item to uh, schedule in, um, you know, probably be two, three, maybe four meetings out, uh, a discussion around metadata man uh, management. Come back and, and uh, have a deeper dive. Sure, sure, great. <laughs> metadata about metadata. <laughs> Doesn't stop. That, okay. That's not a joke. That's actually <laughs> right, quite right. good to think about it. Now you want to know <laughs> who put, who attached that metadata, which right. is already touched by internet. So right it's not that theoretical. Sure, sure. Um, well, uh, yeah, thanks again, everybody. Um, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Thank thanks you. All. Bye. 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 Bye.